What's up guys, it's Brandon again, and I'm bringing you a new War Thunder video today. This one's going to be about the P63A5 and the P63A10. As you see coming up on the screen right now, it's comparing the Yak-19, the Yak-9K to the P63A5 and A10. And mainly in my opinion, looking at the comparisons, which I've never really sat down and looked at them before, I would honestly use a P63A5 or A10 in historical and it's really up to you guys what you think about it, but the ammo count on the 9T and uh, 9K are significantly less than the 5 and the 10. Now, if it comes down to arcade battles, the Yak 9T and 9K appear to outperform the P39s and the P63s in terms of fire rate. Now, in terms of accuracy of the planes, it seems like the P-63s have a greater accuracy than the Yak-19, the Yak-9K, and this is just due to the fact that the fire rates are outlandishly faster than the P-63. Now, moving on to maneuverability, the Yak-9K is the least maneuverable of them all. This is due to the 45mm cannon on it, and when you're shooting the 45mm in a turn, it even has a tendency to jerk the plane to the right or the left or up or down depending on which way you're aiming with it. Now moving on to the P-63A5, it was the third unmaneuverable plane out of the four of these guys and this is just due to the fact that the P-63A5 had a different model of tail than the newer models which caused it to be not as maneuverable as the A-10 was. Now finally, moving on to the P-63A10 and the Yak-9T, during extensive testing in custom battles that my friend and I did, we couldn't really figure out which one was more maneuverable. And we found that the performance of them were just so similar that in a dogfight, it really honestly could go either way. But just remember, the maneuverability of a plane is only as good as a pilot will make it in this game, so a really good pilot will maneuver a plane that he knows well really really good. Now in terms of armor on this thing, the P-63s do seem to have really great armor on them. The cockpits are pretty narrow as you might be able to see in the video. And it doesn't leave a lot of room for pilot kills I've noticed. This isn't a plane that I've had or been pilot killed in quite a bit. I noticed when I do go up against other P-63s, the only thing that mainly pilot kills them is if you're going head on. This isn't a plane that I really recommend going head on with. It's it's just due to the fact that it really depends on the situation. I say if you're going up against something with 20 mils and you should really back down but if you're going up against something that say just has 50 cals or something along that line then go ahead and let loose with it. I mean if you're really good with the 37 millimeter cannon then that will really definitely float your boat. Now I know on a lot of my videos I relate a lot to the history of the planes. Now having said that, the history of the P-63s aren't all that great as one might think. Now why they are even on the American tree is quite odd to me. And this is due to the fact that the P-63s were mainly used by the Soviets during World War II, who honestly ended up putting them to greater use than the Americans did. Now, the P-63 was produced by Bell, who ended up selling heavily to the Soviets. And when the Soviets took them, they took great uh, pride in them, and they created great group fighting tactics against the German Luftwaffe. Now, having said that, with all honesty, as sad as it may sound, I think you should throw the dog a bone and give some of the P-63s in the American tier to the Russians. Because I think it's quite sad how the Russians put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into these things. And they only got a premium P-63 in their lineup. Now, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. I mean, you probably get more of a reward in the uh, Soviet tree with them for the premium version. But that's just the way I feel about that. Now... Maybe Gaijin thought the dog and the bone that I was relating to was America, since America didn't have that many good low-tier planes, I guess, and the P-63s were to make up with that due to the 37mm cannon on them. 
And that goes for the P-39s as well. Okay, well getting back on track to the history of it, which I don't have much of, uh, the Soviets did put the plane to great use, and it seems like the plane was much more luxurious than others, I guess you could say. And this was due to the fact that it sealed cockpits. It gave, it gave pilots more breathing room, basically. And it had better radios as well. Greater communication really matters a lot in these planes. As well as the Russians sent them on very short missions, which was good for, say, going up against the Japanese where they would actually send them on ground strike close air support missions, which a lot of people think that the P-63 might have been used for tank busing, which that's not actually really accurate. It was used for close air support, but it wasn't really recorded that it was used on tanks very much. Now, the Russians kind of just left that up to the Il-2 Sturmoviks, who basically had cannons, machine guns, rockets, and bombs. That was basically the... P-47 for the uh, Soviets. Now, sorry, that was getting kind of off track there, but overall, there wasn't much history of this plane. It was a great plane for the Soviets. It played a large role for them during World War II, but overall, for the Americans, it didn't it didn't play much history. <laughs> and it aches me to say this. I thought this would be a great plane to do uh, historical facts on, but it turns out it quite wasn't. But overall, it's a great plane, has great maneuverability. I love the 37mm cannon in the front of it. It was a great addition for the Americans uh, on Gaijin's part. I'm glad that they put this in, in here for them. It actually gives the Americans something to compete up against against the Yaks, since they were so similar. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of the P-63. I know it wasn't as well put together as some of my other ones. I thought this was just a little fun video to make about these planes. And compared up to the Yaks, I think that they're, they'll definitely give a Yak a run for its money. I know I see a lot of people complaining about the Yaks in-game. But I don't know, throw the dog a bone, like I said, and uh, let the Soviets have their time with the Yaks, because honestly, it seems like they kind of deserve the P-63s with all the work that they put into them. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. My name's Brandon, and hope you enjoyed the video. And that guy just got blown away.